So this is very uh, practical systems, and this is our uncontrolled, and we call the uh, open loop system. And sorry, this is the so the open loop system is this, and this is the second order systems. Okay, and for example, the board, the board machine, and this is some kind of controller dynamics. And for example, here I can say this is the uh, PD controllers, and how can I tell it? This is a constant we call the position control. And this one multiplied with S, and again, anything multiplied with S in the time domain is derivative, and which means velocity. So we call the PD control, positioning and derivative control. So there's a PD controller. Okay, so we arrange in this way, then in this case, we do the unit, uh, unitary feedback here. We simply get the feedback here compared to this. And this one is doable as long as in a physical unit or dimension, this has the same as the input. For this example, this is the angle. This is the angle, so we can directly get into this one. If the input uh, has the different unit than this one, then usually here we have to put certain converters, okay? So certain sensors to convert the signal from the different unit to the different to another unit that has the same like this one. Okay, so that's kind of the common uh, configuration of the system. Um, so now for this case, anyhow, we uh, uh, in the we configure in this way, and also we consider uh, uh, this called the disturbance. TD D means dis disturbance. So uh, for some reasons, the designers decide the disturbance will be affecting the system in this way. But sometimes, uh, depends on your judgment, the disturbance could be, say, could be here, whatever, okay? But here we study like this. So now the first step is you have to find the transfer functions. So the transfer function is like this, and let me explain to you why it's like that. So now we have the system, let me uh, simplify, this is the G1. This is a TD, and this is the G2. And let me uh, put into the symbols like this, minus, plus, and this is OR. So for this case, we have um, two inputs. One is R and one is TD. And we have the one output, and that is one, okay? So usually for the transfer function, by definition, is for single input, single output. So here we have a two input. So basically the complete transfer function is not, does, does not exist, but we can still find the relation between the output to both of the inputs. So okay, so now we can try it this. So y of s will be equal to g2, and multiply with this signal. Okay, that signal coming from td, as well as coming from here, let me call it alpha, right? Okay, let me call it alpha here. What is alpha? Alpha equal to G1, this one, times this signal, that signal equal to R minus Y. Okay, so let me figure out what the relation between alpha and Y. So that one equal to G1 R minus uh, G1 Y. I think that's it, I don't need to be so redundant. So let me just plug in, how about this? Let me, let me just plug in. Will be equal to G times TD plus G times alpha. Alpha equal to uh, GQ. GQ TD plus uh, G, GQ alpha, alpha is G1 times R minus Y. Okay, so by doing this one, then let me simplify this. So Y, one plus G, G2. G1 equal to G2 times DD plus G2, G1 times R. So therefore from here you can see Y will be equal to the both of these things are the input here. So here, uh, by dividing the both sides with this one, I can find the relation. So TD, G2, 1 plus G2, G1, plus R, G2, G1, 
plus G2 G1. So from here, this is the output. The output is related to individual inputs in this way. So for example, if you assume there's a no disturbance, then basically if you know, uh, assume there's no term here and this term disappears when not considering the influence of the disturbance, under that situation, this is the transfer functions between Y and R. Okay. On the other side, if we only consider Block out this one. On the other side, if we uh, want to consider the influence of the disturbance to the output, then we try to assume r equal to zero. Then under these situations, this is the transfer functions between the output and the disturbance. So this case, basically writing down everything will be like this. This is a complete description of the system. Okay, this is a complete description of the system. Okay, now for this case, then we can begin to um, to do something. And the for the first case, and assuming we only want to consider the influence of the input to the output uh, by ignoring the disturbance, then we simply set the, uh, the, the, the disturbance equal to zero. So that means we consider it is only only the first term, not the second term. Okay, so that's the first scenario. So under this case, and again, we consider, say, a unit step input one over s. Okay, so under that situation, by hand, do it manually by hand, and you should be able to calculate the steady state error. Okay, the steady state error basically is this. So let me keep this one. So ESS equal to limit as a portion to zero S times ES. Okay, so that one basically as a portion to zero E. And what, uh, what is E? E by this definition is R minus Y. Okay, so that means further we can simplify that the S times R of S and one minus y over r, right? So here, by assuming Td equal to zero, we have a relation between y and r. So basically, you should be able to determine this form. That is the transfer function of this term here, okay? So you plug in those things carefully, then basically, it's the exercise in this term here, okay? And I'm saying, you plug in, you have to do it, okay? Uh, if only listen without exercise, and you have to polish your your sword, and right, okay, at least for one time in your life, so that will be get get into equal uh, equal to zero. So again, uh, under these situations, we can uh, do the simulations here. So this is the uh, the case study. For the case study. We only uh, do the simulation is the first term. Again, we're assuming there's a no disturbance, so we ignore the second term here. And we're assuming R as equal to the step input. Okay. So we're going to use the step functions in NaLab. Oh, this morning I ordered uh, tickets from OIT. I asked the OIT to install NaLab here. Once that's ready, then I can play around in class. But now you just listen. Okay. So again, if you remember the step input, the syntax in MATLAB, when R is equal to S over one, so the numerator should be this function here, about this function, so K11, sorry, from the descending order 11K, and then 112K like this. You should, you should know what I'm saying, okay? So now you simply play and take the step input, then that will give you this plot here. And if you use this command, then you're going to use the default setting about how long you're going to run the simulations, I mean the times the span in the time domain. But if you like, you can put a comma and put a comma at the system. Let me put here. Step system. And then you can put the comment from 0 0.1.7, 100. So basically this command asking MATLAB to 
give me the plot from 0 to 100 seconds, and then the increment is you calculate the result at every single 0 0.10, uh, 0 0.01 time incremental. So basically, from here to here, there's, only, there's a total 1,001 data point in that curve. Okay. So I think for this case, this old version seems the MATLAB only by default only calculate to 0.9 seconds. If you extend the time uh, the time uh, range in the long one, you can see that is converts to zero. Okay. So that is a case study for um, for this scenario. Then on the second slide, then for the second slide, we want to know again vice versa. We want to know the influence of the TD to the system by uh, not to consider the, the demand, the command input here. So assuming the disturbance is again the unit step input, then again, right now we not consider first term, we consider the second term. So maybe in your slide, you can block out this one. Okay, that'll be easier for you, okay? So when TD equal to one over S, again, using the syntax of the, the step command, so the system described is numerator should be equal to one, Denominator is 112k, 112k. And for this case, we choose k equal to 100, the same as the previous slides I forgot to mention. Okay, so that again, that's a curve like this. And if the curve, the two curves pretty much similar, looks very similar. But if you turn to the previous slide, um, the magnitude are different. For this case, the magnitude is 0 0.01. How about for the previous case, it's one. Okay, so basically, that is influence. If you're going to overlap the two curves together, how to overlap? And say, um, for example, in the previous state, in the previous uh, slice, say let me say six on, uh, say uh, six on one. Okay, something, something. Then if you type the hold on, then you require. Matter to hold on this figure uh, for the next plot. I don't want to over. I don't want to swipe. So hold on the same figure. Then you plot the stop and uh, step again for this system for the system two. Okay. So in this way, the plot of this curve will overlap to the previous plot, and then you can compare. So because of the scale, because of stop, because of the scale, basically if you overlap the two curves together then this curve pretty much is toward the very bottom there. Okay, so basically it tell you if both disturbance and the input are both step input, basically this disturbance in this system has so small influence to the system dynamics, and that is the take home information to you. So basically the, for this system, we call it the system is very robust. It's very robust to the change, to the existence of the disturbance. Okay, we good. And uh, the next one. So basically, here we um, this is uh, misleading. I can tell you, MATLAB won't be able to do the double y-axis. No, the MATLAB doesn't have such functions. I think this is done by artists. Uh, but anyhow. It overlap the two, the previous, the results from the pre, uh, previous two slides, and the green one corresponding is uh, due to the first slide and uh, consider r equal to this and without um, the disturbance. So this green one looking into the scale is looking to here. So if you like, you can uh, put the arrow bar. You can plot the arrow pointing to here. Okay, and the dash black and that corresponding to the scale. So if you like, you can draw the arrow and then pointing to here, referring to you. Okay, so, but basically anything, this representing is the level of the command, either to R or either to TD. Basically, eventually they converge to, to that value. But if you overlap to the, to, to the same scale, basically the dash curve will pretty much lower than what they have. okay? For this case, corresponding the k value equal to 100. So once you have a program ready, uh, ready, you can play around the different value of the k, see what happens. 
For example, if you change k equal to 20, then that is a behavior of this. Okay, if you change k equal to 10, you can see what happens. Okay, if you change k equal to 1,000, so again, we look up here. This is our original system. Our original system, again, this is called a controller, and PD controller uh, positions uh, derivative control. And in this case, the gain, the gain for the uh, derivative controller has been assigned to 11, leaving only one unknown, one parameter, one parameter called the position gain for engineer like you to tune up. So I think this is the first, very first taste of what we, do, what we call the control. Okay, so control basically is for people to first one to understand the system they're dealing with and put into appropriate language like the blood diagram. And you decide, once you decide your blood diagram, you do the analysis just like we've done so far, either by manual calculations or by writing the program. Then the remaining is to play around at this moment with your knowledge play around to see the influence of the K to the output of the response. I think this step has been good enough for many people, even for students in senior design. Every year, the people come to me how to do this one. I simply just telling them the same for people without, they haven't taken control yet or before. So basically, once you have this one, you simply just tune up keep tuning, keep tuning until you see the design response and that is your value, uh, control value, that is uh, the design value. Okay, so for this case, we change the, k, the value of the k from 100 to 20 and you may give the exercise say 10 and to see or even 1000 and I can tell you there should have a range of a k uh, exist for the system to be stable. It shouldn't be random, okay? And you may ask me if we kind of keep uh, tuning the value of a K for every single province, would that be not so scientific? The answer is yes. So that's the reason why here we want to learn the fundamental tools like this, and then later on we have a systematic way to study how to smartly, correctly tune the K by simple calculations. Okay, so for example, then uh, in the module, we have done the module one, and we, right now we are in pretty much to the end of the module two. And starting from the module three, we will gradually begin taking into the designer, designing of the controllers. So which means I give you a certain design criteria. For example, the maximum overshoot should be less than 10%. And say the uh, settling time or the uh, peak time should be less than three seconds. And then the system there I give you have uh, say K, this value, or even sometimes I have a second parameter assigned to you. So give me the number of the parameters <coughs> will satisfy the system. And in the world there is no unique design. So in test, I wouldn't expect your answer would be the same. There is no unique answer. So, but you need to present appropriate calculations to convince me your calculation is correct. Of course, for the linear system, I always have a range of the data that is good, okay? So, kind of give you a head up like this. So again, I think this handout is a very good example and I encourage you to go through by hand manually and to exercise the statistics error and go through by hand to individually to see uh, how can you calculate the time response uh, of Y to R to TD individually by doing the <coughs> transform. And then the third one, you implement this program and begin to play around the K. I think this is a very, very good example here. Okay, and that should be the first one. We really talk about the control, control system, okay. So I would say using this slide as to finish, and although there's a other slide I skip off, but those things is we have been talking, and just for you right now, I can, I can 
see those one will be your exercise, okay? So um, the only last one we talk about is stability. Monday I'm going to start talking about stability. And I have posted this the homework. So here earlier, uh, I said I post homework four first, and then homework three, right? And then I spend a little bit of time, you modify everything, pick everything together. So basically right now, what you have been doing, I think you have been doing on Wednesday already. So basically right now, again, I change back, this is three, and this one will be four. And the other one is homework called the roots. So basically the three homeworks will be attaching to this one, this module. And this is a transient dynamics we've been talking. The homework four is about steady state we finished today. And this one is this about stability, and that's the one I probably will take maybe one or two lecture hours. But the homework data is ready. And you can look at the deadline. Okay, I give you pretty much loose deadlines. And then I think the once we uh, you turn in this homework and then we have another test. I think the test is scheduled uh, two weeks from today. Okay? Okay, great. Thank you.